should be live. Check our feed here. Checking audio. We're good. Okay. <clears throat> 277. You ready? Uh, give me just a second. This is a test of the mute button that's not working. Oh, now there it's working. Go. Yep. Okay. Yes. Uh, yawn. I have to yawn. <sighs> It's late here. It's my fault, but it's late here. Okay, Twitch just went live. Okay, 277, yep. you ready? Okay. Yep. Where's my start button? Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 277 of the Security Podcast on the In30 Network. My name is Hi, I'm Tom, is right there. Straight ahead. Hello. And we... We didn't really have much new news to talk about. I feel like literally every news story, every single one is so and so with uh, with ransomware. I mean, it's this company, that company, and and we and we talk about there's nothing really anyone can do. It's not. It's we tell you, take all the same precautions. And we're going to talk about some of them today, but it's okay. This company paid ransomware. This company got hacked. Th all this other stuff. It doesn't. It doesn't affect us to tell you about it. I mean, if there's something, we will. But generally, it's story after story after story, which I guess is a good thing. It's keeping some people honest and making money, but it's also really bad. I don't know. Maybe the exploits are getting better for the wrong reasons, but I don't know. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things like, hey, what's the response? You pay the ransomware or you recover from backups. And, really, and then you, the only two options you have. Yeah, and then or your Twitch, and you lose everything, or that. So, or that. So anyway, so our our story tonight, our main topic tonight is we're actually going to save you money. We want to talk about useless security products that people try to get you to buy that we've spoken about, and where you should really spend your money if you're going to spend money on stuff like this. So um, the, it starts from the story. Vice had an article. Uh, do you really need a VPN? And we, we kind of hit on it last week. But it's one of those things like it, everything depends on your use case. Just because you see an ExpressVPN article on uh, YouTube or a NordVPN on, on TV or somebody tells you you need to use a VPN, why? Why do you need one? And the answer is there's only a very limited purpose for it. And I think we're going overboard on recommending something without under, without people understanding what it actually does rather than the buzzword of it keeps you more secure. So, so I'm going to, I'm going to hit it to throw it to Tom and he can explain more, but we have a lot of these that we want to discuss tonight. Yeah. The, the VPN is mostly a question of your threat model, right? What are you trying to protect against? Is it, you want to use the public airport Wi-Fi, but you don't want people you know, sniffing your traffic. Well, let's talk about that specific threat model. It's like, okay, well, you're using public Wi-Fi, um, right? Either you've got a limited data plan or it's just faster or you might not have signal in some regions. Cool. That's a perfectly good reason. Um, but honestly, most sites today are going to be secured through HTTPS. Sure, somebody can see, you know, okay, this person went to wikipedia.org, facebook.com, but they can't see anything beyond that, right? Because everything after that host name is encrypted. So you're not really given too much away. That said, if you really still wanted kind of that belt and suspenders protection of a VPN, um, yeah, you could go purchase one of these commercial guys, or you can set one up on your router at home. Some of them have got the speech feature built in. You can get uh, a $30 Raspberry Pi or even, you know, a cheaper Raspberry Pi for one of the older models. That would be perfectly functional as a at-home VPN that puts you on your home network, lets you go out your standard ISP, uh, and offers the same kind of security benefits you would get from, you know, any of the commercial offerings, but without wasting all that money on a monthly service. 
Um, so I know we've done that personally for years. So I think that the, the issue that people don't understand is, yeah, you get a really spiffy interface and say, where do you want to exit from? And you're like, oh, I'm, I'm going to exit in Switzerland because they're not going to sell my information and everything else. And the answer is, um, we, if you know where you're exiting, so does the, the nation state actors and everything else, the people that are going. So they're going to get that traffic. So if you're worried about them getting your traffic at home, it, it's not really any different. Maybe it makes you feel good, but you're paying somebody some, some stuff and they may be lying to you. We don't purposely recommend a VPN on the show because, because every day we hear a new VPN is says they don't log, but yet they log or they're spending more on advertising. Why are they spending more in advertising? It's not because the, the we don't know. Are they are they in cahoots with someone? We don't know. So they end up at this endpoint. The government uh, scoops it up. They do whatever they want with it, and or they or somehow ransomware hits and they leak the logs. And for what? What are you trying to do now? I have a VPN because my my work blocks certain websites that I use, specifically WhatsApp. And so I need to get on WhatsApp to because I have no cell service in the building and I only have Wi-Fi. So that's how I communicate with people. You can't send text messages because there's no cell service. So WhatsApp tends to be that one. And so I go on my VPN just to get around that. And if the school finds out I'm on WhatsApp, okay. I mean, it's it's on my phone. It's not the end of the world. So what I do is I have my own VPN and I on a $35 Raspberry Pi and I and it connects from home. So literally all my traffic in the day goes through my home Verizon ISP. Is Verizon doing stuff with it? Of course they are. But like you said, it's HTTPS in almost 100% of the cases. So they only know I go to YouTube. They don't know what I'm watching. They know I'm at Gmail, but they don't know what I'm doing. So I'm taking that risk, but I'm also not worried. Yeah, if if your use case is to evade your ISP, okay, that's kind of understandable, right? Maybe maybe your ISP uh, doesn't let you access. In some regions, there's you know draconian censorship um, or or surveillance for certain websites. If you're trying to get around that, okay, that use case actually does fit one of these commercial VPN providers, uh, especially ones that let you choose your own endpoint. Um, are you trying to maybe? do something illegal, like download the latest Taylor Swift album because it's a straight up bop. Um, I, I guess a VPN could help you in these situations, but there's also no guarantee that you're going to be protected from the powers that be, uh, right? We've seen plenty of news stories about, uh, you know, just like you were saying, VPNs that say, oh, we don't, we don't store logs uh, of anything that our customers do um, until the the people next door ask us really nicely, then we're just going to give them literally every piece of data we have on. Um, we've seen VPN companies kind of sell out to big players like that um, or, or just be coerced by law enforcement to start keeping logs for certain transactions. Um, so there's, there's a couple reasons why you would use that commercial VPN, but by default for the majority of people out there, it's not really going to offer much, if any, security benefit. Uh, I say just skip it. Unless you really, really know that you need to, you know, exit uh, on a, a UK ISP so you can watch the BBC iPlayer to catch the latest episode of Doctor Who. Um, yeah, security-wise, there's not much here to help you. Let me, I want to end with, so I want to talk about the public Wi-Fi again. I think, I think there has to be a difference. If you're on completely open, like completely open, no protection, maybe connecting to your house is more prudent than, than not having a VPN that connects to your house or something that obscure. Maybe that's better. But if you're, a, let's say, an airport or wherever where you have to type in a WPA key, I think you're, you're okay at that point because WPA does offer wrapper protection and you can't sniff traffic. Uh, you can't cross sniff traffic and everything else. But look, you want to go and spend the money that's fine. Go spend the money. The problem is I don't think it's going to get you anything, anything substantially better unless you're, you're like you said, you're trying to watch the BBC. Yeah. And so. you know, like even. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. I think we've uh, said all. Yeah. <laughs> Again, you want more? We have a signal group. Find us on Twitter at in 30 at the, sh uh, on Twitter, you, we can get you in. We can talk about this 
more detail. It was a strange article that came out because it kind of, everyone's like, but you told us to get a VPN. And we said, well, what's your threat model? Who are you running from? And we went from there. Uh, the next thing we put in is extra AV, antivirus, and firewalls and all that other good stuff. None of it is needed. Microsoft does a fabulous job as it is. And and it runs quietly. It doesn't take up extra RAM. And you and I really want to say that the browsers, keeping up to date on your browsers is probably your best form of protection more than literally anything else, because your browsers are your first line of defense and they're all they're all protecting you. So as long as you keep them with the standard set of security features, you're good. Yeah. Yeah, that's really it. Uh, most modern operating systems today will have some form of antivirus protection, um, right? Uh, the Mac has got a fleet of utilities built in to look for badness uh, and bad actors, and they're, they're constantly locking down OS X more and more as time goes on, uh, right? Microsoft um, has grown Windows Defender and uh, what was Security Essentials, and it joined Windows Defender into this just fantastic product that stays quiet, keeps itself up to date, and does good work. Right? Is it the very best tippy top antivirus out there? No, probably not. Um, but do you really need that? Right? Like, how often are you downloading scary files from the internet and just running them? Um, right? If all you're doing is looking at memes on Reddit and saving JPEGs to your downloads folder, you, you don't need an antivirus, anything extra. Um, I, I mean, Security Essentials is, or Security Essentials, uh, Windows Defender is perfect. It just does what it's supposed to do. Uh, so don't don't worry about like these extra anti malware tools or you know malware byte scans for days. Um, you just don't really need it today. It Let hogs up you, system resources. I want to ask you this: on my day to day, I used to Google search everything all the time, uh, web search everything. Now, if I'm going to Google search something, it, it's maybe once or twice a day. Because I'm going to the same sites over and over again, right? I, I'm going to the social medias. I'm going to the shopping sites. I'm probably visiting 15 or 20 sites consistently throughout the day. And if I'm Google searching anything else, it's very rare. Like, I mean, I do. You go to Wikipedia and you search all the time. But it, like I told you what crypto punks were about an hour ago, 10 minutes ago. And that's what you searched up. But like, I'm not searching day to day. I'm going to normal websites that are reputable in some capacity, that would it would be a bad thing if they were infecting you with malware. And I think the majority of people are doing that too. Yeah, like, yeah. And you're shopping. You know, that's not to, yeah. It's not to say that, you know, social media sites can't give you malware. I remember the, your Flash player is out of date uh, days of olden Facebook uh, when I was still on that platform. And that was a pretty big problem. Um, they've gotten a whole lot better about message filtering, but yeah, always, always be wary when you're downloading anything, especially from people you don't personally know. And even if it is somebody you know and they're writing some weird stuff, um, like my grandma sent me a Flash Player update once. Um, that's not accurate. She doesn't know what Flash Player is. Um, you know, just be wary. And 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 then to end it with, um, it's. Um, again, this is for the average person. If you're the IT administrator of a public library, maybe you do different things. Um, but if you are the average person on your personal computer, Windows Defender is fine. Uh, using your browser, whatever, whichever it is, uh, what is it Edge, Chrome, or Firefox, or Safari, you're generally okay. You keep up to date. When it says update, you update. This is whatever, the second Tuesday of the month, you update. Whenever OS 10 tells you to update you're fine. And if you're using Linux, you're not getting any viruses anyway. <laughs> I don't so, really worry ab about the problem. Um, yeah. I do update when Linux tells me to update that. So with extra AV, oh, and I do want to say, if you do notice something, whatever it is, something is slow down and you're concerned, that's when you download something specific for that. Don't let them use their clock cycles over and over and over again every waking moment of every day. You think you have spyware? Try to figure out what it is and try to remove it based on find the right removal tool and everything else, but do that at that time rather than, than letting them use your cycles forever and ever and ever. It'll, 
slow down your computer. You'll f- it'll feel slower, and it's just more annoying. It's all all of a sudden yeah. they do all these weird things. So extra AV you don't need. Okay, with that I have uh, mobile AV. Let's continue in the antivirus uh, uh, space. Mobile AV also completely useless. So on the Play Store, so uh, Android. Um, Apple Play, Apple App Store, Google Play Store. <clears throat> to get into both of those, you need to be vetted on the Apple on the App Store. A human looks at it on Google. I, I don't. I'm, I think a human looks at it, or it's algorithmically. But they have some protection. They have very good protections in place on both. Has things slipped through? Absolutely. But there's no need to download a separate virus scan thing to filter what the App Store and the Play Store have already done. And in fact, their their definitions come from directly those app stores themselves. So now you're doing a double scan for something that is was not needed if you stay true to the local app stores. And we can get even better than that at proving that these things are absolutely useless. So uh, on modern devices, whether we're talking iPhones or Android phones, there's some amount of compartmentalization that happens with applications, right? Like, unless they're saving to a specified, like, shared storage location, especially on Android, that was super common. Um, each application has its own storage, its own databases, its own process table. Basically, it's like containers, but not really. Like, it's, it's pre, pre-doc, um, uh, pre-C groups and all the Linux fun container stuff. But basically, each container operates in its own little box phone. Those boxes can't interact with each other except through API calls which is on Android or iOS, the share menu or the context menu to say, hey, I want to open like this photo with this photo editor. And then it literally just sends the photo over to that editing program and it's cool. Uh, But what that means is that these antiviruses are also locked to this box. How are they going to detect a virus on your phone if they can't get out of their little context box? Well, the reason is because some things aren't locked down to just these boxes. Uh, some certain pieces of system-wide information. Uh, on Android, that used to be a full list of everything you had installed on the system. So they would literally just take this list and say, do any of these say bad virus? No? Okay, right? They had a list of names they would check against, and if they didn't show up, you're good. But that's literally all they could do because they don't have root access. They can't get outside their box. There's literally no way for them to do actual heuristic scanning on the applications. All they can do is just look at what's happening to the system and make a really bad guess. They're useless. And and so the next thing with mobile stuff is to deal with permissions. So in both platforms, they've been every every, every OS update, they've been getting more and more granular with the position. the permissions, literally telling developers to explicitly say while you do this. Now I get apps that says, hey, <clears throat> please scan this. And then the, you hit OK, and they're going to say, no, we need to open up your camera. It's going to ask you this really crazy thing that asks, can we use your camera? And we literally want to take a picture of something. That is why we're using your camera. So the apps are starting to make more legitimate apps are starting to make it understandable, but um, the app store and or both Android and iOS are resetting permissions. I think they both now are going to reset permissions from apps you haven't used to say, Hey, did you know that this is doing it? And periodically iOS says, did you know you're sharing your location with this? What would you like to do? So they're also getting on board. Now, if you're going to a third party app store, all bets are off. I mean, if you're going to allow third party apps on your phone that have not been vetted, I mean, these mobile antivirus scans are not going to do anything, but that's when you have to look. Is Fortnite malicious? Probably not. Could it be converted into a malicious file? Absolutely. So if you're downloading a Fortnite, um, I guess it's APK, and you go to the Fortnite website, you are probably good. Um, And the reason I choose Fortnite is they're not allowed on the Android app store or they pull themselves. But again, if you download like Fortnite underscore free VBucks.APK from some random website, you could be in trouble. Be careful there. Correct. So, and, and go there. And now I do want to say, I think I'm going to, I'm going to ask your opinion on this. I think if you have something sensitive to go and see a website, whatever it is, I think doing it on your mobile phone is more locked down than on your computer and probably better to 
to view if you had to if you had to go view something that was you were um, a little concerned it, about? Yeah, it depends on your threat model. If you're worried about other applications spying on you, then yeah, generally, unless you've got like a virtual machine you can throw away or a Linux live CD to boot into, your phone's going to be more compartmentalized. Um, if you're worried about digital trackers um, and the actual website operators themselves being able to fingerprint you or put you in a, a demographic bucket, your phone, unless it's the most common model out there, is probably going to put you into a smaller bucket, uh, especially if you use a non-default browser, than just using any browser on a standard 1080p uh, monitor with a maximized browser so you get the maximized window. That's probably a larger bucket of people to fall into compared to the mobile device space. Um, I could be wrong there. Um, just something I just to think feel about. like. I just feel like if I'm going to... If I'm going to look at something maybe I shouldn't be doing, I'd rather do it on my phone. Because I think what you said, it's it's more compartmentalized and it's if harder to run ex exact if files If you are searching on your phone. For, for My Little Pony NFTs, yeah, I would do so on a private browser on your phone. <laughs> yeah. Um, and while we're talking about AV, let's quickly get through extra firewalls. We asked if Zone Alarm was a thing. Apparently, it still was. It's if still you're a running thing. behind. If you're running behind a, a, a NAT router, one of those blue boxes that your ISP gives you or whomever, and you're not directly connected to the internet and you keep that up to date or you at least put WPA protection on and you turned off all the bad stuff like UPnP, there's nothing else you need because now you're double protected. You're protected from your router and you're protected from your, from your computer that's also checking. And downloading a third party will probably add more chaos to your life that you don't need. Yeah, Windows Firewall is fine. It does the job. Yeah. The, the max default rules are fine. You, you don't have to worry about this problem anymore. Unless you're doing something really specific with your network configuration, you don't really have to worry about firewalls too much on a like day-to-day -day regular person. So let's move on. We have... Let's do browser extensions. So the newest thing is have all these browser extensions. And Chrome was hugely pushing these. Like you can make them really extensible. You can essentially have your computer without with just being in Chrome. And for the most part, they worked. But after you after you went through with it, you learned that they're just they're just UI web views of other sites that you can just go to and or at least for me. And you find out that most of them are completely useless other than uBlock Origin and your password manager. And those are literally the only two that I run. Yep. Yeah, um, it's browser extensions also have a pretty depending on on their permission set because there are permissions to browser extensions not as fine-grained but similar to mobile phone permissions. Um, where a browser extension can say, hey, I would like access to just Facebook.com or I would like access to all websites. Um, but they've got a pretty wide blast radius as far as security problems go, right? Because if that permission set is this browser extension can do anything on all websites I've ever visited, well, yeah, it can do anything. It can take screenshots. It can watch what you type. It can send all that information back to a third party who is you know, looking at you browsing. Um, the My Little Pony NFTs. Uh, like, there's a lot of bad that can happen there. Um, also, a lot of good if you use it in the right way. So just be careful about what browser extensions you're running. Um, we are going to talk about these more, but I know we've harped on password managers a bunch. Um, my browsers all have my password manager loaded into an extension because that's super helpful. Um, and uBlock Origin. Um, Running an ad blocker, and I'm going to specifically recommend uBlock Origin. Um, yep. But running running an ad blocker is a security tool. It really is. It's I when a website says, "Hey, please, can you support us by turning off your ad blocker?" Usually, I'll say, "Okay." Um, we're not. I don't. I don't personally want to block ads. I don't care that they show ads. I understand the point of ads and everything else. The problem is I don't want all the other stuff, it, all the other content blocking or the content that's there. There's a huge amount of tracking cookies. There's a huge amount of social spiders and everything else. 
I, I don't want ads on Facebook for things that I searched the day before. Um, you want to make money by showing me ads? Fine, show me ads. Um, I don't really want them to be relevant. I guess relevant ads are slightly better, but they're getting really creepy in how they're doing it. So it blocks all the other malicious stuff. And I do like that. And and it does speed up the internet. And then, like you said, you have your password manager of choice that's there also. But other than that, I don't... I, HTTPS anywhere I, we used to recommend, the entire internet at this point is HTTPS. Um, Ghostery, that's another... A highly popular one. I mean, I think at this point it's 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 just belt and suspenders, and then all those stupid coupon saving ones, uh, honey or whatever it is. They're probably okay. They probably work, but I just feel like I don't want that trade off. And something like oh, Grammarly. That's the one that analyzes what you type and makes it. They are literal. I mean, that essentially you're giving them per the permission to read your keyboard. That I absolutely do not want. It works, I guess, if that's what you want. Yeah, a lot of these free coupon uh, extensions are reading and sending back your full browser history. Um, that's that's how they can afford to stay in business, is they are literally selling your data and giving you coupons for it. If you're okay with that transaction, cool. Just don't go into a blind. So why does blocking ads improve your security policy? Well, on like most browsers are really safe. There's a bunch of engineering that has gone into making sure they're sandboxed. And yeah, everything has got holes and problems in it. But ultimately, it's super positive uh, when, I, when I think about browser security. Um, it's not like the Wild West of IE6 where you could take over a whole PC with a really badly written page in, uh, in Microsoft front page. Uh, like it's gotten really good. Um, but still on the off chance that there is a drive-by download, on the off chance that there is an exploit or a zero day, a lot of the ways these are weaponized is by saying, hey, ad tech company, I would like to run this ad on all of these web pages with this JavaScript. An ad tech company says, ah, this doesn't look at all malicious. And they run it every because you paid them money to do so. And then all of a sudden you get you know, crypto locker malware and a bunch of other badness, uh, coin miners, you name it, it comes through these things. Um, if you were running an ad blocker that just said, hey, anything over here on this space, we're just not going to load this, right? We know this is a known ad target, just skip loading that. Then you would never get hit with that drive by download. You would never be infected. Um, it's, it does speed up the web because you get rid of the ads, which I do like. Um, but, you know, on the off chance that one of those ads happens to be malicious, well, it's blocked anyway, so you're safer. I actually liked the, 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 con the JavaScript that would mine for Bitcoin or Monero in the website's browser. Not because I wanted to use my cycles, but when a new sites like, hey, instead of charging you, can we mine for Bitcoin on your, while you're here? I, feel, I felt like that was a good trade-off. What I do know is that people will say, well, if I can keep it for th five extra seconds after I leave and then 10 extra seconds, we are making money and that's not cool. Or we could put malicious stuff in there and b get taken advantage. But the idea of, hey, uh, we're going to charge you in something free to you, a, a minimal amount of electricity in this case. Uh, will you do this? The answer is yes. I wish that they would stay it, but unfortunately we can't have nice things and people did weaponize it. So, oh, yeah. and then finally with the extensions, uh, companies come in and they get bought out all the time. And I've had this happen. Nefarious companies will buy out these extensions and then use it to run ads. And because you have the extension, there's no revetting it. So it sits there. They won't update it. And it just sits there and sits there and sits there. And the bad guys have access to everything because they bought the they bought the back end from the developer. Yeah, and a lot of these developers are, you know, working uh, either open source or they're working as one person shops and they're putting their heart and soul into this thing that's taking a bunch of time to have a company roll up and say, hey, we'll give you $20,000 for it on the spot if you just hand it to us, right? For them, it's this massive, you know, sometimes life-changing windfall of money. Uh, and they don't know what's going to happen to the product and they don't know this company is evil. All they know is, hey, I can cash out. Now. 
Um, which is good, right? We want developers to to eat and continue to, you know, have homes. Um, but the downside is that, yeah, some of these companies are absolutely malicious and they will abuse whatever install base that that extension has. Uh, so you might need to look up the people behind the thing you're installing and make sure they're reputable. It's a lot of work, I know, but, you know, all the more reason to keep that extension list teeny. Just also don't say, oh, well, this has 10,000 ratings. It must be good. No, they probably they could have bought an old version. It has to be the current version. And I would still look them up and go from there. But if you're installing an extension, ask yourself, why am I installing it? Is there a way I can get there through the website? And almost always there is. And if that's the case, then maybe you want to go through the website. I want to end. We have a very short amount of time, but that's probably as much as we need. The most useless, useless, useless security thing that ever existed was identity or is identity protection. Do not buy identity protection. You probably have three or four different companies who had a breach offering you identity protection. Just figure out how to use it, but just remember they are completely useless. We have one bonus item. Uh, literally any InfoSec product you see on TV, don't buy it, oh. ever, no matter what it is. If you see us, if you see this episode on TV, throw it away, cancel us, cancel the, the Patreon or whatever yeah. uh, donations you've given us. I don't think we got donations. We're, but no, anyway, we don't have donations. Like, like, stop subscribing to the podcast, leave the Signal group if you ever see us on TV. There's, yeah, uh, security things on TV are going to the masses. You see Norton all the time or LifeLock or whatever it is. Maybe Norton is good, but they just violate everything we just said. Um, they're a commercial VPN. They have AB, AV. They're mobile AV. And again, your threat model is not that. So they're trying to peddle it to you or to your grandparents. Run away. Uninstall it. Go find something else. Um and especially identity protection, because identity protection is completely useless. You may have a good story where it helped and everything else, but generally people are still doing hard pulls and soft pulls on your credit account when they shouldn't be or, or opening credit cards when they shouldn't be. And it's just on you to keep on checking it because they're not going to do it. I, uh, I literally had LifeLock. Um, after one of the services I had got breached. I know we're, we're over time. I'm going to make it quick. Um, and during that time, I changed jobs, which required a, a credit check. Uh, I got a new apartment, which required a credit check. And I bought a car, which required a credit check. And they called me 12 months later because it was a year of free, free identity theft and credit reporting and monitoring. And they said, hey, would you like to renew? And I said, no, absolutely not. I have done all of these things. I didn't get one phone call or email about any of them. You just did nothing. Bye. Um, so yeah, that's my story. Good testimony. I mean, people do have stories, but generally it's, it's usually the credit card company calling you and saying, Hey, did you buy this? Cause I get that a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Actually, I get I don't. All the time. I've actually never had my, uh, my credit card identity stolen type thing. My wife has all the time, but it's her one discover card just constantly gets hacked or whatever. I literally never, I mean, never had any issues, but with that said, don't do identity protection. They're not that useful. Anyway, we're going to end the show. And the one thing I do want to say is we do have a signal group. You want to ask us any about any of this or or who bought the Wu-Tang Clan album, which is not really security related, but it did get sold. We will discuss it. It does involve NFTs. So just be aware. Anyway, join our signal group. If not, we will see you hopefully next week. And have a good night, everybody. See you, everyone. Okay. And off to 77. And that was really good.